I am 100% on board with this. I'm going to give a thumbs up and a <laughs> clap. Okay. I'll give it a okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, so um, it looks like the recording started. Thank you, Mike. Um, so the, the first step in terms of thinking about your components, um, set, set the components aside for a moment. Uh, those are very important. So, so you're definitely right in thinking about those individually. Uh, but the first step is to make sure that you have a concrete idea of all of the various ways that this needs to be accessible. Mm -hmm. um, so when it comes to accessibility, again, please, Mike and Andrew, stop me at any point. <laughs> but when it comes to accessibility, there are two kind of types of accessibility. There's the accessibility for kind of the general user overall. And then there's the accessibility for users who are using assistive tech. Um, and those can be very different. And of course, there's many differences in, in categories within there. Um, when it comes to assistive tech, though, there are kind of two main technologies that pretty much all sub-assistive tech will stem from. And, um, and so starting with those main technologies will give you a, a way to kind of begin um, and, and to sort of dummy check yourselves along the way without having to go through the burden of going through all assistive tech all the time. However, you will still want to kind of make sure that you've documented what the other assistive tech is that, um, that you want to be able to test with. And there are ways to test with it yourself without engaging a real user of that assistive tech. Um, so the two main technologies, uh, which you're aware of and, and probably using constantly, uh, screen readers and keyboards. Um, and the reason why those are the two main technologies is because the keyboard itself is um, kind of the starting point for where most kind of switch devices or, um, uh, you know, other kind of assistive tech that might exist where that interfaces. So if something is usable through the kind of keyboard experience, then more likely than not, it will also, I, I won't say it will be guaranteed to be, but more likely than not, it will also be usable from a switch experience. Um, usable is probably the wrong word. It will also be somehow available <laughs> and potentially usable with enough patience through the switch experience. Um, so thinking about that might be, um, you know, just making sure that the keyboard experience isn't just functional, but that the keyboard experience is actually you know, as enjoyable as it can possibly be for every single one of your components. But also, I, you know, I mentioned those kind of stories, literally sitting down and thinking about the narrative of what somebody needs to do independent of the components. Because the components, uh, if you need to say, um, set up the email address for your Drupal theme, what is that default email address that, um, that any user of the site is going to go to, and, you, and you're going to do that in um, the, the theme layer. And uh, well, that would be the admin theme. So let's go to the front end theme. Um, the user needs to get to, um, the user is somewhere mid content and they need to get to the navigation. What are they going to do? And talking through each and every one of those steps that they're going to take, that talking through that, documenting that is probably going to touch four or five different components, not just one. So rather than you testing with the keyboard or the screen reader through those four, uh, through the individual component and making sure that the component works, what actually matters is does that journey through those four or five components that it takes for somebody to get from the middle of the page to the main navigation or that it takes for somebody to get to the search or that it takes for somebody to get to the contact information in the footer. Um, these are kind of common things that people need to do on pretty much every site. So identifying what are those common things. Um, if it's a form, what does it take for the user to get to the submit button? Um, those are the kind of, um, those are the things that you're going to want to test for always using both keyboard and screen reader, and you'll want to use multiple screen readers. But then I would also urge you to attempt to put into that list, uh, attempting to use switch devices. Um, there are, uh, Android does have a switch uh, built in that you can use the, um, 
you can bypass the USB switch device and you can just use the up and down. This is actually an iPhone, but you can use the um, volume up and volume down for the switch. It's built in. Um, so you can use that to make sure that your experience is not so completely unusable um, with a switch device that, that somebody would kind of walk away <laughs> um, from it, so to speak, or give up. Um, can, I ask a, can I ask a question? Yeah. Okay. So a switch device is different than a keyboard. It's it, it can be an Android device. So is it normally an Android phone? I do have an Android phone that I can test with. Um, is it normally no, that, it's or it's normally, normally something else? Yeah. So switch encompasses switch is its own huge kind of um, plethora of assistive tech devices. Um, but switch devices are what will you what will be used typically by your individuals who have the the least mobility, um, and the majority of switch devices, uh, they'll also be used by uh, a lot of times by users with cognitive difficulties uh, or users of AAC, um, augmented communication. Um, so typically they're going to be somewhere between two and eight buttons. They might be large buttons that the individual might be able to press. Um, and they will do everything in the experience using those buttons. So that, that gives them the ability to kind of select elements and, and drill in or drill out. Um, there are ways to simulate this with the keyboard with your arrow keys, um, but most at this time, um, most switch technology costs money. Mm -hmm. uh, the one that doesn't cost money is on your Android device, on any Android device, um, enabling the switch functionality in your uh, accessibility settings. Um, it's a service and then it'll ask you to pair a USB switch device, um, but you don't have to. And then when you don't, you can use your volume up and down keys to simulate. Um, now somebody who actually needs a switch device isn't gonna be able to use their volume up and down keys to do the switch experience. It's just for you to be able to test with that experience. Um, another more extreme example of switch is uh, sip and puff devices, which take the input from the, the sip and puff. So uh, kind of extreme mobility where you might really truly only have the ability to have one form, one method of indicating intent. So, so Michael, I just, I, I think that everything that Rain said is, is absolutely true, but it's also, I don't, I don't want to, to, I think that the, Sip and puff is is an extreme. It's even more extreme than, than screen readers, and and I think that there's for sighted users, it's a it's a much harder thing to try and wrap your head around how to how to deal with that. And I think it's really important to to have have this theme be thinking about users who are not even just using the linear um, um, linear screen reader sort of view of a website, but also thinking about how do we how do we try and set it up so that we can we can allow people to activate it with all kinds of other devices, including the extremes like the switch devices. Um, right. But, but the, I, I posed, posed some things in, in the, the, uh, the chat about this, but, but I think it's, it's really important to have, since this is gonna be the theme in 9.1, this is gonna be 9.1 default theme, we need to have a demo button on simplytest.me. And I think that we can bug Adam about this. I think he's the one who's currently managing this. Let's get him to go off and to set this up so that it's easy for anyone to start playing around with this. So we have a, a, simple, um, a simple way to engage with the default theme, just like there is with the Umami theme. Um, it, that means it's a huge thing to have that space where people can jump right in with one click into the, the, uh, the, the theme environment to start testing it. Um, the, the other thing is, is that, that it would be useful, like if, if you give me a stable URL, more stable than simply test.me, I can, I can crawl the, the site, but we need to have it filled with the information that's relevant for, for the, like what kind of content is going to be available with, with the, the Olivero theme. Do we have any sample sites that we can start throwing up? Can we just take some sample sites that have um, default core and, and, and contrib modules that are built into it? And can we throw the Olivero theme onto that so that we can start crawling these to see if we can mm -hmm. find any errors in the theme that will be expressed in in the various different ways that themes get get mm -hmm. used. Like if there's a, a site navigation, again, we can crawl the website, we can find the information, 
um, we can we can learn about about errors from this. And I can give you a, a spreadsheet with the errors that that Axe Core or IBM's uh, Equal Access has has, and and we can start talking about about what we can learn from these automated tools. These automated tools only catch about a third of the errors, though. I mean, even it doesn't matter whether it's IBM Equal Access or um, or, or Axe or, or whatever, it's only going to catch about a third of the errors. So keyboard only testing is the other one. It's just, just trying to make sure that everyone on the team, when you're doing your development, you're starting to just do testing with the keyboard. Mm -hmm. Did you unplug your mouse and for a day when you're doing your development, you're testing around with it, you don't have your mouse. Like mm -hmm. if you just start exploring this as w without your mouse, that, that's a much simpler way to begin to, to, to help help explore where some of the problems are. Um, and again, with, with, with just unplugging your mouse and, and your trackpad, which is more difficult, you're, you're, you're getting closer to, 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 to getting like 60, 70% of the errors that you're going to normally find. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's certainly a lot of value in trying to learn about how screen readers work, but, but this is the Olivero theme. We need to try and reach out to the NFB, and I know I can I can chat with the CEO downward at the NFB to see if we can find other people at the NFB to do testing on this. We want this to be something that that Rachel would have been proud of, yeah. and that the NFB can say yes, this is an orally pleasing website. This is, this goes back to to what uh, Jesse Beach was was trying to to do with with. Um, her, one of her goals was to try and produce an orally pleasing theme and not just ha having a lot of redundant, um, annoying information as part of that. How do we create something that's, that's, that's an, an orally enjoyable, like how do we create that orable user interface? And we can think about that from a screen reader perspective, but really we're also talking about this for the, 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 uh, the, the Google Home, the Alexa, the Siri. Yeah, yeah. All of those are about oral experiences. And so we're, we're really trying to be think, thinking about the future and, and thinking about an oral, an oral interface. And if we can have 9.1 being not just about people with disabilities, but trying to be first and foremost thinking about how, how we are, are thinking oral, just like when we were with 8.0, we were thinking mobile. 8.0 was mobile. 9.0 or 9.1 is oral. How do we bring that in? And um, yeah, that those are those are my thoughts. Yeah, I, lo I love that language. Orally pleasing website. Yeah, I wrote that down. <laughs> <laughs> that's Jesse's. I, I just stole it from her. Yeah. That's great. Um. So that that all sounds awesome. Um. We are like. You know, um, Kat earlier like found an issue where you know there was duplicate links on like the teaser image and also <laughs> on the uh, like around the title. You know, so like the, the first thought was remove the link around that, but the thing is that's a view mode setting. That's something that's in Drupal that's controlled through Drupal. So, and the reason I'm bringing that up is is like there are like we're limited a little bit by the standard profile too, which of course can be changed. But at the same time, that's more work, and this is already a lot of work, and maybe, you know, and I want to do it, but right now, just getting the theme so, in. So I'm seeing, I'm seeing a very overwhelmed looking face. Um, yeah, I on, totally on am. You. Um, I, I Brianna, just say something on, on this. Um, you, Olivero is a theme which mm -hmm. goes on top of Drupal, and, mm -hmm. and a lot of this stuff is not going to be Olivero's job. Um, you know, because it would, in some ways, it shouldn't be Olivero's job because if, if you ended up putting a ton of extra stuff into Olivero, then uh, as soon as you change to another theme, you would just lose all of that and every other theme would have to go and re-implement all of that all over again. And uh, that's for a, for a CMS like Drupal or WordPress. That's really just not 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 the point of a theme at all. Um, so you are you are going to come come up with things which are not going to be in Olivero's scope to fix. Um, and 
likewise, I mean, we found this quite a, quite a lot with the umami thing. Um, is that you know you can you can stick stuff into the into the umami demo profile, and they they did stick quite a lot of custom things in there, custom templates for the recipe food recipe uh, pages. And, and go, well, you know, this is useless to anyone who then tries to build a website because it's in that custom theme. Uh, so you, you would never be able to kind of replicate that on your own theme. So the, there's definitely going to be stuff that is not for Olivero to fix, but is for the, the core components to fix. Um, okay. I went through it, you know, just for an hour yesterday and <clears throat> went through the homepage that's what he was talking about and you know went through some forms and stuff and that's kind of what I found too is that um, just like with the web forms or whatever um, you know there were some issues that I marked as core issues obviously there's nothing to be that we can do about that because it's not theme related but it's something definitely to um, to write an issue for with core um, but you know, I think that, I mean, I obviously, the first thing I do is keyboard testing. It's the easiest thing to do. Um, and uh, we don't have JAWS, I don't think, uh, with Lullabot. So I don't use JAWS with Lullabot. Um, so that's one thing I think we need to do, Michael, is uh, is talk with uh, the team about getting that. Um, but and I use... Uh, not, mm -hmm. I was, was going to say, that might not really be worth worth the investment just because having the, the value of the screen reader is also in the person who, who uses it, knowing it quite well. And you're not going to, you know, it's going to take you a while to get to that level of comfort with JAWS. So finding um, somebody to, to test with or just okay. to have test with JAWS for you might be a, a better approach. I think so. I've used it before, but I'm not a fluent JAWS <laughs> user. So I think that having somebody that's fluent in JAWS, that sounds kind of weird, but would be, um, would be better for that. Um, I'm I not, definitely. I'm not a fluent JAWS user. I mean, I, 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 you know, I have used it. I have uh, used NVDA, I've used voiceover, but, but to be fluent takes a long time. It, it's not a, it's not something that, and it takes forgetting all of the things that we we are that we're we're used to having as 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 sighted users. We understand the navigation. When you're a blind user, you don't understand that navigation, right? You're trying to you have to throw everything we know about Drupal away and have that sense of this is a website, and I'm going to start with the top of the page. What is the skip nav? How does the how does the, what is the structure? What are the heading structures? It's a, it's a completely different way of thinking about the site. Mm -hmm. um, I, I want to I want to kind of st stop for a moment and step back and kind of try to help you get past this feeling of overwhelm that I can tell that you're both feeling right now. Um, and maybe we can give you a couple of pra practical steps to take from here. Um, so I think the first practical step. Now I saw Kat, you mentioned you don't have CI implemented, but um, having some way of putting out a couple of different test sites or even just one test site um, that, that you put up and make available and, and yeah, give us that, that password for, um, and that would be the first step. And on that site, a couple of things that I would recommend um, are sort of baseline items that should be included. Uh, one is a form that has a date field. Mm -hmm. um, a submit button <laughs> and if you can find a way to do it with safe testing a credit card field as well because um, those are some really common fail areas mm -hmm. um, the other thing that I would recommend is on that default site that you set up or that sort of sample site that you set up um, of course you know user generated content uh, with images um, and the menus would have children in them, so uh, so menus with child menus, and at least two kind of critical navigation points on the page, um, which is fairly easy to do if you have both a user menu and a main menu, um, but at least having two critical menus. Um, and and those, the, those kinds of elements, having them there will um, 
have a lot of the common sort of fail areas. I think we have um, like all of that, you know, okay, like great. we have all of that um, on Tugboat. Um, mm -hmm. And we've been but, like, go ahead. Oh yeah, so then the next thing that I would suggest that you, in terms of sort of steps, so you have that, which is great, check. Then you have a page on there that is your kind of key user journeys. What are the you know, the stories that the user that you expect the user to go through, and and what you um, kind of want people to test um, in, in a way? Like what if somebody stumbles across this and and has an hour or so and wants to play with it? What are those stories that you want to make sure are rock solid? Um, and having those on the site itself then gives the community a way to um, sort of come in easily and help you with that testing. Um, then from there, so, so you have kind of that first, those first two steps that enable that sort of community interaction and give you that space and you can kind of update it regularly and, and give feedback as you um, address things. But then from there, once you have those two things, then it's kind of a matter of, um, as Mike was saying, just um, as you're working, having the kind of um, set of things that you'll always do every time you're working on something, the same way that you would check, you know, you would look at your um, documentation to make sure that the colors are right or the pixels are right. You also just have your developer go through it with the keyboard. Um, can they navigate it with the keyboard? Um, have, have your developer navigate it um, with whatever their screen reader is of choice. Um, and then document what they tested with so that later on you know what hasn't been tested with. But at least you know, you know if everybody's using Max, um, at least you know that before somebody committed their, their change, they went through it with the keyboard and it was good. They went through it with voiceover and it was good. They, they used no coffee filter um, and took the color away and it was good. <laughs> yeah, a more detailed way is, you know, when I used to do audits at the last place I worked at, you know, it literally had every single standard, mm -hmm. you know, written down how to test it and we would check off every single item. So mm -hmm. that's how I would test every single page on the site. So there were global items, obviously, the header, the footer, things like that. But then there were each page and I'd go through every single page on the site. And obviously each page had common like components as you're talking about, mm -hmm. like tables and stuff like that. But if you're talking about really testing every standard, web standard um, concerning accessibility, that's, that's how you would do that. But if you're kind of trying to knock out like the low hanging fruit, like you're talking about, that's what uh, Rena's saying. Mm -hmm. Is start off with like the keyboard and some some of those things, and then we can get more in depth as we. So have I I totally do all that. Like I like I haven't done screen reader testing, but I, I but, but I do make sure everything is keyboard focusable, navigable, and I'm I'm constantly doing that. And and I and when I demo this, I'll even like challenge myself to not use my mouse. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm pretty confident I, I can get around doing that. Um, I haven't done any type of screen reader stuff, but like I'm familiar with like the accessibility tree. I, I, I know how to check that in, in developer tools I, and I know like document outline. And so I'm, I'm trying to keep everything accessible that way. And I'm hoping that goes a long way. Um, right now, the action item, like, like switching gears, the action items that I have in front of me just for the plan going forward is number one, I'm, I want to get like, r right now we do have uh, a, a tugboat site that I, I can personally set up for everyone, anyone pretty easily and it has demo content. Some of the demo content though is gibberish from the develop generate module. Mm -hmm. So if you try to go through that with a screen reader, you're going to be screwed either way. <laughs> so um, like th that might be something where we can have like someone like actually, I, I, I have some uh, uh, articles that I copied and pasted from lullabot.com in there too. Um, but so we have that, we can we can also ask Adam at Simply Test Me to, to set that up. We have some Tugboat scripts that already do that and Simply Test Me is built on Tugboat. So that shouldn't be too big of a hefty journey. 
we need another action item for me is I need to document maybe the key user journey. And that's going to be a little bit difficult because it's a Drupal. Drupal can freaking do anything. So like my thought is, is if you're using this as a theme, you're probably doing it mostly as a blog as opposed to an application. Because mm -hmm. if you're an application, you probably have a custom theme. So you're just kind of doing some blog type stuff. So that is my initial thought for that. And then of course, with with web form and maybe some advanced web form web form stuff in there if you're like um i do test with the keyboard but and then my other action item is maybe identify the components that can that can be componentized testing you know say like oh that the, uh, this doesn't have a discernible focus state or something like that like like that stuff now is is you know uh sooner we, we like like some of that stuff we know about uh andrew's been mm -hmm. like uh at least you were for a little while like you, you were going in there and finding like tons of stuff and um and and, and then kind of maybe break that down and, and do some testing on that and then we can just do some holistic testing until we get to maybe a point where we feel so, like so michael because i'm cheap um we have less than a minute left so i think we just need to hang up and or it'll be us out in less than a minute. <laughs> okay. And then we're and then gonna, we'll, we'll just join back in again. I think it'll work just fine. Okay. So we. Next. So yeah. So we should hang up right now and then just click that link again. Same link. It, it'll it'll be it'll boot us out. But I I just I, I want to go off and and, and uh, I think it might be good to wait until it actually boots us out. But uh, but you're you're. You're, 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 you're on the right track and, cool. and you're doing some good stuff. And, and the main thing is, is that this is a, this is a journey and you're doing a lot mm -hmm. to move along this process. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about being perfect. We're going to go and, and help you along the way and we're going to bring in other people to make it easier. I but appreciate this, that. Yeah. This is a big deal. And, and I think that, that there's a lot to, to work out, but, but don't worry about this being perfect. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. I've been really trying <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. All right. Uh, do we want to just like drop and join? Then I can give a demo, and I can try to even do it without a without a mouse. Or um, should we... yeah, I, yeah. I would suggest that we actually see if it boots us because I've been okay. on a lot of these where Zoom has just been kind, and I think because of COVID, is letting things go wrong. Oh, cool. interesting. All yeah. right. Well, I am going to uh, share a screen then. Sure. Um, and I, I think I posted a link in the Slack here. Let me do it. Uh, if I didn't, I'm going to post the other, the tugboat link. And you, you all can get in here and log in yourselves and do whatever you need. Hold on. I am having trouble finding.